Blog Talk Radio. Hello, I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show and the Ask Laura segment that airs on Sundays. And stay with us for the next hour, and we'll help you experience ways to get unstuck and live an inspired life full of meaning, purpose, and happiness. Each week on Ask Laura, I share a practice that you can take away and use in your own life to get unstuck. Then I open up the phone lines for your calls. The call-in number is 718-766-4415. You can call in right away with any issue or problem where you'd like some guidance, wisdom, or coaching. And uh, you'll just stay on hold until I'm ready to take calls. So you can call in right now if you want to. The phone number again is 718-766-4415. And you can also listen to The Laura Longley Show on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. On Monday's shows, I always have a guest who shares their own techniques and practices for creating authentic change. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking with Dr. Tom Bien, who has written a book called The Buddhist way of happiness and we'll be talking about happiness and I also want to let you know that in honor of this being January and New Year's resolutions I'm offering a free program called 31 days of authentic change wisdom and this is an email mailing I guess that's redundant an email program where you you can sign up to receive a daily mail which gives you a practice to use for that day that will help you create authentic change in your own life. And each of these practices only take 15 minutes or less to do. And I guarantee you at the end of the 31 days, your life will be different. And you can sign up to receive that at the lauralongleyshow.com. In the banner at the top of the page, you'll see the place to go to get more info, and then you can sign up for that. So the practice that I would like to share today is one from these 31 practices that come out in the mailing, 31 Days of Authentic Change. And this practice is about celebrating your resilience. You know, one of the things that really keeps us stuck and unable to take a step in the direction that we really want to go is the fear of making a mistake. When I work with clients on discovering their ideal careers, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard, but what if I make the wrong choice? They're really unhappy and miserable where they are, but that fear of choosing the wrong thing keeps them stuck in a place where they are unhappy and uh, not, not really living an authentic life. They're doing something that doesn't fit for them. So let me ask, answer that question. What if you do make the wrong choice? And, and I put the word wrong in quotes because I don't believe that there are wrong choices. I believe that everything that we choose gives us information. And even if it doesn't create the outcome that we want, we get information from the choice that we've made. So it can tell you something about what you don't want to create by making the wrong choice. It can tell you what doesn't work. And that adds to the store of information that you have about how you can be more successful at creating what you want, and then you can make a different choice for your next step. So there really is no wrong choice. There's the only wrong choice in my view is no choice, (laughs) where you just stay stuck where you are. And this is what's called resiliency. It's not allowing yourself to be stopped in your tracks and dragged down by making a mistake. And looking at what you can learn from that choice rather than beating yourself up for making the choice in the first place. Webster's Dictionary defines resilience as the ability to become strong, healthy, or successful again after something bad happens. And I demand this by changing the word bad to unexpected or undesirable. So the ability to become strong, healthy, or successful again after something unexpected happens or after something undesirable happens. And the reason I change that is, again, I don't like words like wrong and right, good and bad, because I don't think that there is that black and white. I think there's lots of shades of gray. So how can you celebrate your resilience? Because we all have it. Spend 15 minutes celebrating your resilience. That's the practice that goes with this particular tool in the 31 Days of Authentic Change Wisdom. And the way that you can do this is by sitting down with your journal or another piece of paper or notebook 
and review times in your life where you feel like you've made a mistake or things haven't gone as you would have wished them to go and record how you recovered from that situation. And part of the value of looking at how you recovered is reminding yourself that you are okay. You know, you, you weren't devastated by it. You weren't unable to continue living your life. You did recover from it. Also write down what you learned from that experience because the only mistake is not learning from something that doesn't work. So write down what, what you learned and then how did you use that information or that wisdom, because it is wisdom to learn from your mistakes, going forward. And finally, give yourself a pat on the back for your resilience and appreciate how that experience has given you evidence that you'll be okay no matter what happens, because you will. And I just want to share a real quick story about resilience and how it's related to perfectionism, because perfectionism is that piece that keeps us stuck because we think we might make a mistake. We're afraid we won't do it perfectly or we'll make the wrong choice. And, you know, I, I was working with a client several years ago, and actually this person is still a client of mine. And she it, at that time was really a hardcore perfectionist. And I could really relate to that because I consider myself a recovering perfectionist. And she was very hard on herself. And that created a whole lot of anxiety in her life. And when I suggested that she focus on being resilient rather than trying to plan everything so it turned out perfectly, her response was, I don't want to have to be resilient because she didn't want anything to ever go wrong. And even at the time, we both laughed at it when she made that statement because she could realize that that wasn't reality, that things are going to go wrong. You, you are going to make mistakes. We all do. And now a couple of years later, she is one of the most resilient people I know. I love that she was able to laugh at how committed she was to her perfectionism and then gradually shift to having a focus on resilience instead. She's much less anxious and a lot happier as a result. So today, celebrate your resilience and really recognize it for the value that it has in your life. I'm Laura Longley and you're listening to Ask Laura, a version of the Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. You can find me on Facebook at the Laura Longley Show and at the LauraLongleyShow.com. We're going to open up the phone lines now and if you have a question or an issue or some sort of problem in your life where you'd like some advice or guidance from me, I would love to take your call. The call-in number is 718-766-4415. You can call in right away with any question or issue that you have also. If you have, um, if you don't want to call in, there is the chat, and I do have the chat room open. So if you have a question and something you want some help with, you can type it into the chat, and I would be happy to answer it there as well. So feel free to type it in there. And again, if you want to call in, the phone number is 206. Seven, no, it's not. That's my phone number. Why do I keep doing that? It's because I'm looking in the wrong place. The call-in number is 718-766-4415. And I'd love to take your call and give you a little bit of support in, in any case where you're feeling stuck or feeling like you're not quite sure what to do in a particular situation that you have in your own life. And while we're waiting for people in, I do have one other little piece of um, – wisdom that I would like to share with you. And this is <clears throat> a piece of wisdom that has come out of my own experience. And on the Monday shows, um, I, I do a little segment called the light bulb moment. And the light bulb moment is all about, wow, here's something that happened for me or to me, I would say for me, uh, as opposed to to me. But anyway, here's something that happened in my life that led to me having some learning and some increased personal growth because of it. And so one of those things that happened for me just recently led me to be reinforced around trusting myself, trusting my own internal guidance over what others are telling me, being able to notice that what they're telling me about what I should do or who I am isn't resonating for me. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that in just a minute that 
before that, I do want to say once again, if you'd like to call in with a question, 718-766-4415, or you can type your question or issue or problem that you want some guidance in into the chat window. So I would love to connect with you in that way. So what happened for me around getting reinforced that I need to trust my own inner guidance when someone else is telling me something that feels dissonant, it doesn't resonate for me. And what happened was this. A couple of weeks ago, I was going through this period where I was feeling really muddled and confused, and I was having a lot of self-doubt around <clears throat> my direction in my business and whether or not I should just throw in the towel, go back to having a real job. But I, I didn't feel any clear direction on that. I felt really confused. And in the meantime, I was uh, researching guests for my show, for Monday's show, where I always have guests. And the guest that I had been trying to get on the show for a while was Sylvia Brown, the psychic Sylvia Brown. And so I, uh, I found a way to contact her, and this was a couple weeks ago, found a way to contact her. I discovered that she had passed away in November. I wasn't aware of that. But her son, Chris, does psychic readings as well. And because I was in this place of feeling really muddled and confused, I thought, well, hmm, why don't I schedule a reading with Chris and see what he says about, you know, should I throw in the towel on the business? Should I continue with the business? Should I keep doing what I'm doing? Should I add a real job? Should I do a real job instead? You know, help me get some clarity. That's what I was looking for with some help for some clarity. So I scheduled a time and it was about a week and a half out before I could get that time with him. Well, in the meantime, I was no longer in that place of feeling confused, but I thought I'd go ahead and with the reading anyway, just because I thought it would be really interesting. <clears throat> well, the end result was that I was less than impressed with Chris. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. And, um, you know, and there were some reasons for that. You know, first of all, he was not good at connecting with me. And I have a couple of friends who are psychics who I've done readings with, as well as other people who I, you know, are not my friends. And one of the things that they really have to do is they have to really be able to connect with you. He was not good at connecting with me. I did not feel any sort of connection with him at all. And there was this sense of being rushed throughout the whole thing. And they, you know, the people who book his appointments had told me up front, yeah, you, you need to have this really exhaustive list, list of questions because when you're done with your questions, he's done with the reading. And, um, so I did. I had this really long list of questions, but I felt like everything I asked, it was bam, 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 and there was no expanding on the answer or me asking questions around the answer. And it just felt, it felt really rushed. It felt like, oh, God, i got to hurry up. Oh, my God. He got things wrong. There was <clears throat> one thing in particular where I am feeling like I want to move away from Seattle, and I have some ideas of where I want to move. Um, and I asked for his guidance on that. <laughs> and, you know, he told, he told me, oh, yeah, you know, I can see that you really want to be someplace where it's warm and sunny. And I'm like, uh, no, the places I'm thinking of looking at moving to are places like Edinburgh, Scotland, <laughs> and Boston, and Maine, <laughs> which, no, not tropical at all. And, and he told me, yeah, ultimately you'll move to California. I've never, ever had any desire at all to live in California. So, so I'm going, hmm, okay, he doesn't really get th that correct. And he used a lot of things that I felt like were cliche types of advice. So when I was asking about my job, he's like, oh, yeah, you need to get a real job or you'll be bankrupt by the end of the year. And everybody has to work two or three jobs now. And I asked, okay, well, how will, if I move, how will that affect my relationship with my mother? Oh, well, she'll guilt you okay, well, that's not really what I meant. I meant in a broader sense, how will it affect she's elderly? Okay, not what I was asking about. And that was also part of it. He didn't listen very well, and he got confused about what I was asking. And so he gave me advice that didn't even have anything to do with the question I was really asking. And when I tried to clarify the question, he would get kind of irritated with me. So anyway, <laughs> it wasn't really a great experience. And yet, there were two topics where he made dire predictions that really ended up throwing me for a loop in the coming couple of days. And, you know, I had to ask myself, why, when I had so much evidence that he really was not on track with me, did I take those things to heart that he told me that were bad? And even when I was conscious that I was doing that, I couldn't seem to shake it. And 
I really thank God for an energy healer that I work with. I did a session with her yesterday, and she saw <laughs> that I was holding on to those two things. The one thing was you'll be bankrupt by the end of the year if you don't get a real job. And the other thing was that I've been having some issues with my teenage son, and we haven't spoken to each other in several months. And I asked about that situation, and he basically told me we weren't going to reconnect. And I'm like, what? This kid is 17 years old, and I'm never going to reconnect with him? Well, I don't believe that either. But it did. It threw me for a loop because he was, quote, unquote, the expert. So this was a great reminder that I do know what's best in my life and that I'm guided directly by spirit. And even though it can sometimes be helpful to have input from other people, I need to trust my feelings about that input. If he got all these other things wrong and he was not really connected with me, why would I believe what he had to say to me about these horrible things that were going to happen? I think that it's kind of human nature that we do that. And it really showed me how people can get hooked into more of the the scam sorts of things with these psychic advisors. And so it was a great reminder for me that I need to trust myself first and that if what someone is telling me doesn't resonate for me, that's them. It's not me. And I, I hope that you can hear that too. Trust yourself. When people tell you things, you know, sometimes we hear things we don't really want to know, and that's different. But when somebody's telling you something that just really does not resonate with you, trust your own feeling about it. Well, one more opportunity if you want to call in and get some guidance any sort of wisdom, if you have a problem where you need some input or some thoughts, you can call in at 718-766-4415, and I'm just going to give that another minute or two for any callers. And in the meantime, let me give you a couple of announcements. <clears throat> Once again, I want to remind you that I also do a show on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. And you can get information about all the upcoming shows and also listen to archives of previous shows at my website, which is the TheLauraLongleyShow.com. And for January, I'm offering this uh, free email program, 31 Days of Authentic Change Wisdom. You can sign up for it on the website or on my Facebook page. And my Facebook page also you can find just by searching for The Laura Longley Show. And also I want to tell you on the Facebook page, we do a lot of discussion. I post there multiple times a day, and we get some good discussions going around concepts and practices that you can use to create authentic change in your own life. All right, well, um, oh, we do have a caller. I'm very excited about that, so let me go to the caller. Um, oh, we do have a caller. I'm very excited about that, so let me go to the caller. Um, Hi, caller. Oh, Who, who's calling? Hi, this is Stuart. Hi, caller. Who, who's calling? Hey, Stu, you know what? I'm getting a lot of echo on That's here. Yeah, me too. Call again. Hey, so I wonder, can you, can you try just calling right back? Yes, sure. Okay, call thank again. you. All right, so we, yeah, we had a little bit of technical issue, and actually, um, I know that Stu is calling from the UK on a Skype phone, and so that, that sometimes creates some audio issues, but um, he's going to try calling in, in again, and I hope that he will, because I do love to have discussions with callers and answer questions that callers have. Again, the number is 718-766-4415. And um, just to, to uh, wrap it up, in case we don't get another call back from Stu, I do want to remind you on tomorrow's show, I am going to be talking with Dr. Thomas Bien about his book, The Buddha's Way of Happiness. And happiness is a a place where I have been focused in my business as well as in my personal practice for the last couple of years. And the Buddhic perspective on it is that happiness is a way of being. And I, I completely resonate with that. And Tom's book is really a great way to get in touch with your own happiness. Oh, good. Here, I think we got Stu back again. Let me see if I can get him. Hang on one second. 
having it. Oh, good. Here, I think we've got to do that again. Let me see if I can get to hang on one yeah. second. We've still got that echo there, I think. <laughs> we do. I just don't think this is going to work. And, you know, I'm on Skype, and I know that you're calling from a Skype number okay. as well. And I appreciate okay. the call, and I'm so sorry we can't do it. You're calling from a Skype number I'll, I'll, as well. I'll type into the chat window. So All right. Thank you, Sue. I think he said he was going to try the chat window, although it's hard to say because because there was that echo. I was talking over myself talking because there was that delay, unfortunately. So um, <clears throat> anyway, I think that we will go ahead and wrap things up for now. So let's see, where where was I? Because that, that got me a little bit uh, off tracker. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I want to thank you for tuning in to Ask Laura, which is my blog talk radio version of the Laura Longley Show. I had a wonderful time. Please join me here on Blog Talk Radio every Sunday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, and 4 p.m. in the U.K. for Ask Laura. And also, I would love for you to join me on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Or if you happen to be in the Seattle or Rhode Island areas, you can listen in Seattle over the air at KKNW, 1150 a.m., or in Rhode Island, WBLQ, 12.30 a.m. And as I said a moment ago, at 11 a.m. tomorrow, I'll be talking with Dr. Thomas Bean about his book, The Buddha's Way of Happiness, and I would love if you could join us live. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to talking with you next time. <laughs>